close enough for, to ready? Yep. All right. Five, four, three, two. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the beautiful Pictou County Wellness Center in Pictou County, Nova Scotia. My name is Michael Petter. Welcome to Petter Pictou Sports and our presentation this afternoon of Nova Scotia Female Midget Hockey League action between the visiting EDZA West Reds and the hometown team, the Subway Northern Selects. I am very pleased to be joined this afternoon by the greatest color commentator I know, and I'm not just saying that because he's the only one, Alex Terrio. Alex, this should be a very entertaining game this afternoon. We've got a highly skilled Selects team who's got quite the pedigree behind them as well. Yeah, better. you're exactly right. Last season was an absolute dream for these Selects and it's so exciting to see them take the ice for this. A new season right here at the Pictou County Wellness Center as they just get on the ice and start circling around. They're up against a Reds team though that has something to prove here at the Wellness Center. This one is shaping up to be an absolute beauty. We got to talk about that Atlantic Championship team from last season. The fact that there are a good number of returnees on this team, which is going to make them heavily favored for much of the year. And the, a couple of the returnees that we got to point out in particular, Eva Warnell, who is going to be huge for this team throughout the course of the season. Alyssa Fit, just two of the players who are coming back, who are going to be looking to prove that last year was no fluke. And those are two big names. And when you have players like those two, it's not just the, the, the parents that get to know them, it's the players on the other team. This is a very tight-knit league, and most players know other players from various hockey camps and female uh, development camps around the province. And this is where it all goes on the ice. And again, you mentioned too, there are several more on the ice that are gonna be making a difference. They're fun to watch. Absolutely, and I mean, we could go through this entire list of the players, starting with the starting goaltender, Kristen McNeil, but we can't take anything away from the goalie who's gonna be playing at the other end as well, Ailey Berry. She's gonna be coming out here to prove that she belongs in this league as well. We expect some good things from both of these goalies over the course of the next couple of hours. Yeah, you're right, and we're gonna be saying Haley Berry's name quite a bit. This Selects team scored 19 goals in four exhibition games this year. This is gonna be a big test for Barry to see how she can handle the pressure. It doesn't get any bigger than starting the season against the best team, arguably, in the league going into the season. And of course, this is the first of two back-to-back -back games between these teams. They'll be playing again tomorrow morning, and we'll have both of these games right here on Petter Picto Sports through Ustream TV. But of course, Alex, you're gonna be a little bit busy during tomorrow's game. You're gonna be doing another game for Petter Picto Sports, audio only. The uh, Wherewell Major Bantams, we'll talk more about that game later. But playing back-to-back -back games against a team, especially teams who there is the potential that it may end up being a bit of a mismatch. How do you handle going into that first game to make sure that you're not taking too much away from the next day? Well, when it comes to the first game, Petter, I always look at it as, you know, we've had our exhibition games, we know how to work together. Maybe we needed to tweak a little bit. Maybe we work on something different in practice. These are some things that need to be put in place on the ice by both teams. If it does get a little out of hand early on in the game, the selection kind of pull back or the Reds, depending on which way that goes, and they can work more on uh, the plays, moving the puck up the ice, the fundamentals to get ready for the game tomorrow. You know, you always want to come out and have two very close games, but like you said, when things seem like the scale is tilted so far to one way, you might have to go back and learn the fundamentals again, get it all set on the ice, find some teammates that you trust, and get ready for the second one. And we should just point out, uh, the selects are in their home whites with the blue and silver trim, the silver numbers, and the reds, despite the name, they're in black with the with the uh, purple numbering and white piping. I got to admit, when I saw them come out, I was like, wait, is this the reds or is this somebody else? The blues. Yeah, but they, uh, so, the Reds will be in there, black with purple. They'll be skating from left to right on your screen for the first and third periods. The Selects will be skating from right to left. 
for the first and third periods. And we're just about done the warm up. And a bit of a difference from what we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing the 15 minute warm up. You go back in because we do the junior A's, the junior B's, the major midgets, they all have that in common. You've played a lot of hockey, not quite as much as the players who are out there, but you've played a lot of hockey. The difference between that five minute warm up and then right into puck drop versus that 15 minutes, then some time to let the ice get flooded again and then getting out there. You know what, Petter, I'm gonna be completely honest here and it's probably gonna sound a little terrible, but when I was playing in the leagues where you would go, you do a five minute warm up, you'd immediately line up a center ice, you drop the puck. I would always complain because my skates would hurt. I wouldn't feel like my feet were molded in the skates yet and I would still have that pain in my ankles. It always helped to do the warm up, go back, sit, let that pain kind of wear off for a little while, then come back on the ice, and then I would only have a couple of shifts so I go on the ice and back to the bench. When you're on the ice for warm up, and then you go right back on the ice, that's about six or seven minutes of straight pain in your ankles, you're just getting used to it. I think it's fine though, it's a lot better though when you start right away, rather than sitting back. It's just like when you're at the gym, you go to work out, you don't want to let that heart rate drop too far, right? Otherwise, you're not going to work it out anymore. Keep the adrenaline up, take the ice, and you're going to have a good time. That's a little embarrassing story, but I thought I'd share it today anyway. Well, there we have the wisdom of Alex Terrio. Uh, the Alex, my feet hurt Terrio uh, with, with his bits of wisdom. We're still missing one team out there on the ice, though. Still don't see our game officials anywhere looking to uh, see them head out and we should point out as well one major change for the selects from last season to this former head coach Troy Reed decided to step down after last season they got a new man behind the bench Craig Clark Craig of course uh, those who are fans of female hockey in Pictou County know Craig quite well he has coached a lot some of these girls all the way up through the system so for some of these first year players they're going to be playing in a system they're very familiar with. But for these returning players, now having a new coach, the adjustment that they're going to have to go through. Yeah, Craig's been around Pictou County minor hockey for a long time. and He's been on the YMCA as well, which works a lot with kids in the community and helping them get their running feet under them. You know, he does uh, triathlons. He runs uh, in almost every single running event in the county. So he's very familiar. And when it comes to, to these uh these ladies on the ice tonight, he can he can show them how to play hockey and he can mentor them definitely. Craig's a great guy. So we're getting the teams lined up. We're getting, we've got the selects lined up on their blue line. We've got the Reds lining up on their blue line as well. As uh, we've now got the officials out onto the ice. We can tell you the starters for the selects, it's going to be Kristen McNeil. We talked about her starting in goal. The defensive pairing is going to be Ella McLean and Lindsay Smith. The forward line to start will be Alyssa Fitt, Taylor Long, and Haley Harrison. And not uh, nobody informed us of what sort of pregame. Ah, here we go. Let's send it downstairs. This being the home opener, of course, this is the introduction of the team for the season.
All right, there we go. No O Canada. We're just going to get right into it. So uh, the starters mentioned there, Green, Desjardins, Deschenes, Christensen. And uh, one starter was not named. Didn't uh, catch that. So the goalies are going to be Kylin Paul and Ailey Berry for Edza Reds. Uh, Berry getting the start. Paul is the other goalie. And as mentioned, Kristen McNeil is the starting goaltender for the Selects. And her backup for today will be Aaron Sullivan. And the other player just going out there, we are underway. Desjardins tries to move the puck ahead. It gets knocked down at the Reds' blue line. Battle along the near side boards. Comes back to the defenseman, McLean. She will carry it in. McLean coming in, takes a shot. Misses on the near side. Puck goes around the boards to the far point and out to center ice. Picked up there, coming back to get it is the captain, McLean. As we see, she's got the C on her chest this year. Coming in to help out as well. That was fit. Puck is knocked loose and out down to center ice. Back to get it now is Lindsay Smith. Smith coming through center into the zone. Dumps it right in on goal. Nice blocker save. Steered to the corner. Now off the side of the net. Puck is in behind the net, looking to play it out towards the front. Too many reds in the way. It gets to the line and gets sent back down low by Smith. Puck goes all the way around to the far side. There to get it is Christensen. Puck squirts loose. Attempted to center it for Pitts. And a great opportunity for the selects early, but they're not able to convert. Just over a minute gone here in the first period. Everything has been in the red zone so far. Selects continue to buzz and win battles for pucks. There's a shot off the stick of Pitts and another nice save made there by the goalie, Barry. Puck kept in at the line that time by McKenzie and sent back down low. Reds again can't clear as it's kept in. That was actually Clark who kept it in. Some of those numbers are a little bit hard to see at times with the way they've got the shirts tucked into their backs. Uh, and then the long hair coming down to obscure the top of the number as well. But Alex, your thought on the first minute and 48 seconds. Well, the Slicks had a great chance there, and uh, Ali Berry made a great save. It was almost like it happened in slow motion. The net was open for a second, and then it was closed pretty quick. A great early save there by the Reds goaltender, but it looks like the Selects getting an early power play here off of that penalty. And so it will be a power play for the Selects. Just a minute 42 in, and it takes them just three seconds to convert on that power play as Cassie Clark will score for the Selects. Off of the draw, the puck comes back to the point. Clark is able to fire it in, and it took just four seconds of power play time for the Selects to get the first goal of the season and it goes to the defenseman and the daughter of the head coach, Cassie Clark. So the selects, not a lot to really analyze on that power play other than the fact they won the draw, they got the shot away and put it up into the net. Yeah, that would have been a goal regardless of the power <laughs> play better. That was a nice shot by Cassie Clark, top shelf. And right off of the draw, the selects come storming in once again as Natalie McKay comes in and gets a shot away. Now they're battling in the near side corner. Puck is wrapped around to the far side. Attempted pass to come into the defenseman who was pinching in. That gets intercepted. Now coming out there was Bird, but a good job on the back check to knock the puck off of Bird's stick 
and that'll send it down the length of the ice going back to get it there will be Julia Green. She worked it up the boards. It gets knocked down there by Warnell. Now the puck squirts out to center ice and down into the select zone. Good job by Lindsay Smith to cut off the angle. Now it's played down into the corner far side. Green is there. Selects trying to settle the puck down. They do. That pass goes into the skate of the intended target. And now they come out as the puck is played ahead. That was, I believe that's a four there, Taylor Long. Really hard to see those numbers on some of these players who have it tucked in. Puck sent down the length of the ice. It's going to come right in onto McNeil. And she settles that puck down. And out now comes the defenseman, Ella McLean. McLean sends it into the corner. We got another penalty coming up. And it appears it is going to again go to the Reds at 318. And this one is going to be... Uh, didn't catch the number. But this penalty coming at 318. Clark getting the goal. As they're just announcing that. And this penalty coming to Penelope Ringette at 318. Uh, now down into the corner as the Selects power play goes to work for the second time. Pass across. There's a shot. Save. Rebound. Another nice save. As Barry made two saves there in rapid succession to keep it a one nothing game. Now cross crease pass. It gets through. They score! As the Selects are just able to get too many bodies in close. And as the puck was bouncing back and forth across the crease, Ailey Barry could not keep the five hole closed as she had to try and keep going from end to end. And just like that, two power play goals, it's now two nothing. Yeah, I mean, a great goal. You know, you got to crash the net and that's exactly what the Selects did. Two penalties by the Reds, two goals by the Selects. We're out shooting them eight nothing right now. So it's not like Barry's not playing well. It's just the opportunities when they're down uh, is, is just too much to handle as we get an icing call on the play. That goal, I think it was Landon Pitt scored that. And uh, now the selects are up 2 nothing. cut it. And Pitts, if she does indeed get the goal, I believe there was an ass there will be an assist, I believe, to Natalie McKay, I think it was, who uh, was uh, able to make one of the several shots as that puck was going back and forth through the crease. Give Barry full credit. She did everything she could, but just too many select bodies in close. Now here come the selects again into the zone. There's a shot, and that gets... The stick gets uh, tipped so that the puck ends up going wide. I believe that's Jenna Reed, but again, hard to read numbers on some of these jerseys when the girls have them tucked in so far. Actually, no, that's Reed at the point. Now the puck comes to Clark. She goes to play it down low, and the Reds are able to get it out to center ice and into the select zone, but not very deep, and it's turned right back up the other way. It was indeed Pitts getting the goal, and it was uh, Linehan getting an assist on that goal. They're just announcing... And now there's another chance, another nice save by Barry to keep it a 2-0 game here as Ailey Barry had to come up big there. Again, a Selects player getting in close. Yeah, the Selects going to be doing that all game, Petter, and Barry's been very, very good so far. For the amount of chances the Selects have had for Landon Pitt, or yeah, for uh, Landon Pitts, that goal. If you count the preseason, Petter, that's her ninth point in four games, four goals for, uh, for Pitts there. And Landon Pitts, one of the players that uh, we, we've heard there's already a lot of interest from a few different schools south of the border for Landon Pitts, and we can see why with the offensive numbers that she's putting up right now. And here come the selects again into the zone. I believe that's Warnell, but again, it's hard to tell sometimes who's who. There's a shot blocker save. Now coming in from the point and teeing it up is McLean. Puck is in close. It comes loose, jamming away at it. And finally covering up and making and hanging on for another face-off, Ailey Berry. And these selects, they don't, uh, there is no such word as slow down or stop in their vocabulary, at least for these first five minutes, 18 seconds. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, they just showed exactly how much they want to score. That puck was loose for a moment. They just crashed the grease, did everything they could. But again, Berry coming up big. 
And a big shout out to a couple of defenders on the Reds as well. Again, it was hard to read the numbers, but they did a really good job of keeping the players off their goaltender when they were crashing the crease. And uh, the purple numbers on the black background, uh, gotta say, if you remember the Amherst Ramblers jerseys from a couple of years ago in the Maritime Hockey League, you know what I think of purple numbers on black backgrounds. But enough about that, let's get back to the play. Reds get possession, but can't clear the zone. That pass intercepted, there's a shot, rebound is there, another save, and Select still jam away at it. Now played back to the point, Clark gets the shot through. It just misses the net, puck bounces off the end boards, going back to get it is Green, it wrapped around the boards, kept in. Now played back again to Clark, she takes the shot, it gets blocked in front. There's a chance for Long, and another nice save. 11th save or 12th save of the afternoon already for Ailey Berry. And, uh, you know, we got to mention Berry, but we also got to mention Julia Green, a couple nice plays on the defensive side of the puck as well. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Mia Paul as well made a good play as well, making sure that Berry could see the puck. I mean, the active sticks in the defensive zone is something important and something every hockey player needs to learn how to do. And Mia Paul's been doing a very good job of it so far tonight. And here's a chance to get the puck out to center ice and down into the select zone. Going back to get it there, the select defenseman. Puck is played around the wall, and out they come. Carrying the puck there. That shot just goes up over the crossbar. I believe that was uh, Linehan who took that shot. Now coming in, there's another shot. That doesn't miss by much. Puck comes back to McKay, Natalie McKay, she gets a shot away. That gets deflected right in front. Now it comes back to the defenseman Smith. She can't play it cleanly and out come the Reds. With it now is Bird. Bird with a shot, save made. And there's the first official shot on goal for the Reds at the seven minute mark of this first period. Battling at center ice. Puck is played into the select zone, but right onto the stick of one of the select's defensemen, and out they come back the other way. All the way down into the corner, trying to throw it towards the front of the net for Harrison. That pass misses the target. They go over to the near side wall. Out in front, there's a shot at close range off the stick of Fit, and another nice save made there by Barry. Now a centering pass. That can't be received cleanly, and out come the Reds. That was Paul. Now back to Deschen, or Christensen rather. Puck is picked up there by Desjardins. She tries to clear the zone. That doesn't quite work. And I believe that's Warnell trying to get the pass through to Livingston, but that doesn't connect. And now with it is Fit, Alyssa Fit. Couldn't get the puck out towards the center of the ice. Battling along the near side boards, picking it up there is McLean. McLean down in the corner, throws it towards the front, intended for Smith, but that doesn't connect. Now back to the line. Wrist shot deflected, and nearly a great opportunity there for KJ Emery. Puck comes over, there's a, another chance alone in front but just fanning on that shot. And there's another shot. This one's blocked on its way in. And the Reds will just send the puck down the ice for an icing call. 8.45 gone here in this first period. And Alex, it has been all picked Northern Subway selects. You know what, one thing I've noticed about the selects better that I really like is their defense. They rotate. You can tell when the left side goes down, the right side drops back, and then they rotate like a complete circle. And it's so beneficial when you have players like uh, Tori McPherson and Ella McLean that can hold the puck in every time the clear is made. And when they need to, they go down deep. And the forwards know enough to cycle back and help them out so they're never caught out of, out of position better. They're playing incredibly well so far. A very well coached team, a very strong system here for the selects. And they're threatening again here with just about, or just over nine minutes gone here in the first period. Selects, work the cycle, back to the point now. Puck ends up coming out of the zone. That'll be an offside as not quite able to hold the line was, I believe that was Abigail McKenzie. Again, 
Okay. McKenzie or Clark, either one. It's I think that was McKenzie because I think, the, and, and unfortunately, I hate to say it like this, but I, I misplaced my glasses a couple days ago too. So the, these light gray numbers on white backgrounds that are tucked into the back and I don't have my glasses. <laughs> I don't have my glasses. Yeah. Uh, uh, can, uh, anything, can anything else make it harder to see? You know, you got the numbers tucked in, you got light numbers on light jerseys, and my glasses are missing. <coughs> All right, here come the Reds now. That's Desjardins with the puck. Desjardins, she gets it knocked off her stick, and the Selects will bring it back out. Back to get it there is Christensen. She plays it off the wall. Desjardins works it out to center. It's down into the Select zone. Going back to pick it up is Lindsay Smith. Smith, she'll circle it back the other way for Jenna Reed. Reed plays it ahead, misses her target with that pass. That's going to be an icing call with 9.47 left to go here in the first period. We're starting to see the Reds come down the ice and kind of abandon the whole passing up the ice. They're taking it one at a time up the ice and trying to make moves to get by the defense, which is a good thing to do if you're pinned in the your own zone so far. If passing it out isn't going to work, carrying out is the next best thing. There's a shot that gets blocked on its way into Kristen McNeil. And out come the selects. That pass just a little bit behind Alyssa Fit. Now Fit will pick up the puck, get, carry it in. Fit can't get a shot away herself, so she gives over to Harrison, who gets the shot off. Barry makes the save. And out will come the Reds. Carrying the puck up there, that is Regan Barry. Barry sends the puck down below the goal line. Puck is played back to the near side. It'll come all the way up the wall and carrying it out there is Harrison. She tries to make a cross ice pass. That gets broken up and Barry will dump it back into the select zone. Nine minutes left to go here in the first period. Selects lead it by two off a pair of power play goals earlier this period. Puck is ping ponged back and forth across the blue line. Now it's turned over and here comes Bird with a chance. Bird shot and a big save made there by McNeil. Puck comes in to the side of McNeil's net and she'll cover up and hang on. And McNeil with a goalie only having faced now three shots as there were two there in rapid succession in 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes, maintaining focus always a challenge but she's been able to do that when she needed to. Puck is played around the boards. Now they'll go back around the other way again, will the selects. It picked up there by McPherson. She gets it ahead. And that pass, KJ Emery feeds it to Landon Pitts. Pitts with a shot and another glorious opportunity turned aside. Pitts gets it back again. Pitts with another shot. And Barry makes the save and able to hang on. And Ailey Barry. Uh, anyone who's watching from uh, the Fredericton area, if you can tell us, Ailey Berry and Regan Berry, sisters, cousins, or just a coincidence, they happen to have a last name, the same last name, uh, just curiosity more than anything else. Yeah, we'll be seeing them a lot this year, and uh, we'd like to make the connection And uh, as we follow their seasons here by calling the home games for the Subway Selects. That's right. Every Selects home game all season long will be available right here. What a deflection there. <laughs> And Barry able to stay with a puck. That is a picture perfect definition of how to deflect a puck. But Barry able to stay with it and make a huge save there to keep it a 2 0 game. Selects looking to get the puck out. They are able to clear the zone. Trying to push it ahead there is Landon Pitts, and she is just so strong on the puck. Now she gets it again. There's a shot save made. Looking for the rebound. I believe that was Emery. But it, or, uh, Yes, it was Emery, but it just gets steered aside. Now the pass ahead for Pitts, and jumping up in to join her on the rush there is Livingston, and it comes back to Reed. Reed with the shot, and that doesn't miss by a whole munch. She was looking to get it to Pitts for a deflection. Selects get it back again. Here they come on the rush, but just a step offside. I believe it was McKay who was just in ahead, but... Landon Pitts so strong on the puck when she's got it in her possession, nobody's taking it away from her. Yeah, she's good, she's fast, she knows when to shoot the puck and her shot is heavy too. 
We've seen a couple of great saves there by Barry because of those heavy shots. And speaking of Barry Fetter, she's made 18 saves so far in the first 13 minutes of hockey. Looks like she's in for a busy afternoon. Uh, if those first 13 minutes are any indication. Selects, that shot gets deflected up over the glass and out of play, so we'll have another face off with 6.44 left to go in this first period. Don't forget, if you wanna join the conversation about the game, there is that little chat bar right off to the side. Uh, by all means, share your thoughts, your comments, your questions, anything at all that you wanna to say to us about the game. By all means, we, uh, we do keep that open throughout the game so that we can see what it is that you have to say as well. Puck is out to center ice, immediately turned back the other way by Smith. Now dumped in low by Livingston. Into the near side corner. Reds will get possession there. Try to flip it out to center, but that goes off of a body. Now they'll get it out, but that will go all the way down the ice for an icing call, 6-19 left in the first period. And the other thing I'm really noticing about this Selects team, not only are they smart positionally, but they are so quick in getting to those positions. It's one thing to know where you have to be. It's another thing to get there in short order. Yeah, you're right, Petter. Their turning radius is really good. It's almost like some of them gain speed when they do the sharp turns. And when you're talking about sometimes you're down too low, you realize it, or maybe they reverse the puck on you when you're forechecking. It's really beneficial to be able to turn very quickly, and you're right, the Subway Selects are doing that here in this game and uh, putting themselves in a good position. And we just got a note about the Berries. They are sisters, not only that, this goaltender, Ailey Berry, underage and has made 20 or 19 saves so far this afternoon, and she is certainly showing that she deserves to be playing at this level. Selects bring the puck out towards the center of the ice. Now it's going to be played back to the point. There's a tee up shot, deflection. Now another chance and they score. Selects able to put that one in. And I believe, as I try to get a better look at the number there, that that was number 10, Tori McPherson. The shot from the point, I believe, came from Ella McLean. And then it was deflected, went off the end boards, came right to the stick of McPherson and Barry tried to get back to that other post. And Nat, thank you so much for joining us for this game. You are, as we see, Nat, Nat is the mom of the Barry sisters watching from home. And we appreciate the kind words about our broadcast as well. Selects jam away at it again, but again, Barry able to close the door. And now another chance. And Barry able to find that one and cover up for another face-off, 5.20 left to go. Now 20 saves on the afternoon for Ailey Berry, the underage goaltender for this EDZA or EDZA West Reds team. As we get the official announcement of that goal, and it was indeed McPherson, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get... And Fit gets a... They actually gave Fit and Clark the assists on that one. I thought for sure the shot came from... Uh, McLean, but apparently the shot came from uh, from Clark. So that is the third goal for the the selects here this afternoon. And now working her way up with the puck is Ella McLean. She gets the pass ahead, coming into the zone, working down the right side, coming towards the net, and not able to get a clean shot away there. I believe that was again McPherson. Now back to the line. Trying to make a cross crease pass there was Landon Pitts. She gets the puck back out towards the high slot. There's a shot and another big save and the puck goes up over the glass and out of play. 4.35 left to go here in the first period. Great passing there by Pitts as she got the puck right onto the stick of KJ Emery. Yeah, Emery had a great play as well. I want to shout out Julianne Desjardins who made a good stick play in the zone there. Playing defense for the Reds and Julian was in a rough position. Uh, she had two selects players on either side of her, and even though the pass didn't go through, she still made a great play, making sure the rebound didn't get to the target. Attempt to clear the zone. It's kept in there by Jenna Reed. She takes the shot, and that ends up going just wide. Now trying to come out of the corner with the puck. The selects are able to get it 
Back to the line, and now pass back down low again. Shot, save, rebound, and they score again. I believe that may have been Clark. As the selects make it four to nothing. Can't tell, is that an eight or a nine? Can't see the bottom of the number, so. Uh, Clark's the defenseman, so I guess it's a nine. Okay, so that would be Ashley Livingston who got that one for the selects. And Livingston, who did score that goal, now has the puck, finds it in her feet, goes to dump it in, it gets knocked down at the blue line, and now the selects come in. There's a shot, I believe that was uh, Lindsay, or that was uh, Lenahan, I, I think. Now there's a glorious chance for Jenna Reed as she pinched in from the line, but couldn't quite get her stick on it. Now we're gonna have another penalty. Holding the stick is gonna be the call. That is, actually it was McKay who got that most recent goal. And the penalty actually is going to go to the selects. It's going to be Jenna Reed who goes off for holding the stick. So we're going to see the first power play of the season as far as the regular season goes for the Edza Reds. With 3.40 left to go here in the first period, selects leading it 4 to nothing. Goal so far from Cassie Clark, Tori McPherson, Natalie McKay, and uh, Landon Pitts. There we go. Tori. <laughs> My formatting's off. That's, that's what I get for trying to follow Alex's notes. Reds win the draw. There's a chance. Good shot from the point there by Julia Green and nearly a deflection by the Selects defender into her own net. There's a shot again by Green as she was looking for a deflection this time off the stick of, I believe that was Desjardins. Green gets it back again. She takes the shot. And another attempted deflection by Desjardins. Selects trying to clear the zone. They can't. Now they're able to get the puck and get it out. 35 seconds gone here in the power play for the Reds, but some great chances off of some very good shooting by Julia Green. Green has the puck again. She plays it out to center. That's intercepted by McLean. She'll bring it into the zone. McLean now killing some time as she skates around with the puck. Now she'll just back up, back up, back up, and continue to kill time here as the selects are on the penalty kill. Now she'll just dump it down the length of the ice. Racing to the puck first is... The selects forward, and another big save by Barry to prevent a shorthanded goal there, as coming in dangerously was Haley Harrison. Now the puck is into the select zone. Harrison able to squirt it loose. Played off the boards nicely there. I believe that's a 10 in McPherson. And the Reds get the puck back out to center ice. 30 seconds left in their power play. Puck sent back down into the red zone. And they'll have a chance to start working their way up once again. Pass just misses the target of Regan Berry. And the Selects send it back down the length of the ice. 16 seconds left in the penalty. Selects get on the puck first. There's a chance for Linehan. She can't get a shot away as she was tied up nicely. And now out comes Berry. She makes the pass over. There's a shot. And a save made there by Kristen McNeil. And uh, again, I want to come back to Julia Green just coming back out onto the ice. She had some stellar shots early in that power play opportunity. Yeah, she really did. And a couple of them almost resulted in a goal for the Reds. The slap shots from the point are always devious in this type of league because you never know who's going to get a stick or a skate or a hand on it. But uh, good opportunity and good velocity by Green. Pa penalty is now over. Selects have killed off their first penalty of the season and out they come. Here come the Selects coming in and another big save on a breakaway by Ailey Berry. Wow. A huge save. And now we're going to have a penalty after the play as one of the Select players knocking down one of the Reds. I hope Berry's okay. And I believe that's Jenna Reed going right back to the box again. And Reed and Barry, who got crashed into, into the net, is down. 
it's never a good thing to see, Petter, especially in, 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 in a play like that. And uh, best wishes are with Barry, who seems to be a little a little worse for wear after that collision. And it was it was a clean play, I should oh, point out. It, it was just the, the player was coming in on a partial breakaway, got the shot off, and then her momentum carried her into Barry, and then her and the, I, I believe it was... Uh, uh, Pitts and Barry who went into the net together and uh, obviously and of course knowing that uh, Ailey's mom is watching right now from back home in Fredericton we're uh, Just gonna wait and see here as as one of the Reds coaches talking to the uh, officials right now. But the officials. I mean, with, with, a, with a collision like that, and, and this is just from experience, and when I used to be a, a goaltender and you would get hit sometimes, you know, the, the wind could be knocked out of you really quickly. And let's hope it's something like that, that maybe the wind was just knocked out of her. Because when you have all that pads on, you've been sweating so much, and you've been as worked as she's been. I mean, she's made an incredible amount of saves in the first period. Sometimes just that added sweat and the wind gets you, and you, it kind of takes a while, but you get your breath back, and then you, you start moving again, and then... You know, things get working again, and when you're lying on that ice, you get a little cold because all that sweat starts to freeze, but it looks like she's okay. At least she's uh, she's up and sitting down. Yeah, so that's yeah. a huge positive. Sitting upright at least and getting back to her feet, so. And it looks like they're going to pull her out of the game, however. And so on her way in is going to be Kylin Paul, the uh, other goaltender for the Reds. And uh, between periods, we'll try to get an update. Uh, we'll see if we can get downstairs and get an update on, uh, on Ailey Berry there. So... Uh, Ailey Berry, 18 minutes, 39 seconds of playing time, 23 saves on 27 shots. That's incredible. And like, let's be realistic, 27 quality shots too. That wasn't just, you know, 27 dump-ins that went right on the net. That was 27 high quality shots and she stopped 23 of them. A wonderful, wonderful effort for the underage midget goaltender Ailey Berry and uh, obviously we will do what we can to try to get an update on her Kylin Paul now the uh, goaltender for the Reds as the puck is dumped down the ice as the selects again on the penalty kill as Jenna Reed back in the box for her second consecutive penalty and the selects penalty kill Going to work with the puck right now is McLean. She went to play it back out to center ice again to kill a little bit of time. Now it does come back out. We're into the final minute of this first period. And the puck is played ahead and into the zone. Here comes Mia Paul. And the puck again goes off a skate and into the corner. And I'll ask the same question now that we've got Kylin Paul in the net and Mia Paul out there on the ice. Anybody can tell us if they are sisters, cousins, or again, if it might just be a coincidence. I know names like Barry and Paul, there's a good chance that it might just be coincidence, but worth asking. We found out the Barrys are sisters by asking. 14 seconds left in the period here. Puck, that pass just misses the stick of Deschen. Actually, I think Deshen is wearing 35 and Christensen's wearing 36. 
And that will do it for the first period of play. Pretty much all selects as they lead it for nothing, out shooting the Reds 27 to five in that first period. But the big story once again, the condition of Ailey Berry, as soon as we get some information, we will pass it along. In the meantime, we are gonna take a break uh, and we will come back in a few minutes to get you ready for the start of the second period. We'll uh, keep the stream running, but we're gonna stop talking for a little bit and we'll come back, get you ready for the start of the second in just a bit. Thanks so much. Mom's talking to dad right now, so we don't have to worry too much about it.
you know it's good. I look at when I'm when I look at a new jersey, how easy is that gonna be for the play by play guy and do the color for Yeah, I mean it's yeah. Like, That's all you really need to know. Yeah. Like these ones, the colors are good, but these jerseys, I'm not a big fan of uh, of the, the the light gray on on white. I'm really not. And the fact that so many, the fact that so many of the girls wear them tucked in too. All right, folks, we're back getting you ready for the start of the second period. Here are the Zambonis off the ice. The Selects are on their bench. We just need another hockey team and some reps, and then we're good to go. Uh, a couple of things. A big thank you to uh, the. Uh, coaching staff of the Reds for being uh, very gracious by giving me information uh, during uh, during the uh, during the intermission there when I actually went down and checked because sometimes with injuries and coaching staffs uh, getting that information is like pulling teeth but uh, they were uh, very gracious to say to me and no it looks like she's going to be fine so good news Ailey Berry does look like she's going to be just fine just a little bit of the Maybe like uh, Alex said, maybe a little bit of a wind knocked out, a little bit of a bell rung kind of situation. So she's getting assessed, but looks like everything is going to be good. And we also got some information during the intermission about those jerseys that we were talking about in the uh, early in the game and why they're not red yet. It's because these are not their actual jerseys. Uh, these are sort of replacement jerseys that they're using until their regular jerseys come in. And those ones will have red, so they'll make a little bit it more look, sense. Look pretty wet, red to me, Petter, that's for sure. Nice jerseys, too. Very slick, very sleek. I like the, I, I don't know, I'm not going to give it away. You'll see them next time you watch them play. I'm yeah. not going to ruin anything. Yeah, but uh, the uh, logo, very, very sharp, I will say that much. And a uh, really nice set of jerseys, and we look forward to uh, the next time. Uh, of course, tomorrow they'll still be wearing those black and purple uh, numbers that they have today. So when we, when I call tomorrow's game by myself, because Alex is busy doing another game, uh, we'll uh, see uh, next time they come to town, we'll see them in their brand new jerseys. So the Selects have 39 seconds of penalty kill time left to deal with here to start the second period after Jenna Reed took that uh, second penalty of the period for herself. Not only the second penalty of the game for the Selects, but the second penalty of the game for Jenna Reed as she leads the team. And depending on what's going on in the other game that's being played in the league, could be leading the league in penalty minutes right now. I'm trying to find the update. I can't, but when I do, I'll let you know. Yeah, we're uh, trying to uh, find out what's going on in that other game. Uh, can you at least tell us who's playing in that other one, Alex? Yes. I need to find that page that I have oh, open here. Uh, I thought I saw it. it. Scroll down just a little bit. Or no, uh, you got too many pages. Okay, scroll back up. Right there. Up come, uh, September 29th, that's today. Oh, sorry. The Penguins and Nationals. <laughs> okay. So the uh, 
the Bussy Auto Brokers Penguins, or as I just call them, the East Hands Penguins, because that's where they play out of, taking on the Fundy Nationals in Quispamsis. Uh, and we've also got the Station 6 Fire, who I believe are based out of Dartmouth, taking on McIntyre Chevy Panthers out of Member 2. And then uh, those are the three games that are taking place here today. No scores in any of those other games just yet, although I believe that one up in Member 2 is not till later this evening, is it? Yes, and the one uh, with the Penguins and the Nationals has started uh, about two hours ago. Right? Yeah, so yeah, we'll keep, uh, keep our eyes open trying to get that. In the meantime, we appear to be waiting for something. Not sure what exactly we're waiting for here. Um, not exactly sure what we are waiting for, but uh, we also are uh, ba -ba 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 -da 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 -da. Meanwhile, we should maybe mention very quickly that uh, Pedro Picto Sports is the play-by-play -play home of the Subway Selects. It's also the home of the Wherewell Major Bantam Bombers, the Picto or the Weeks Major Midgets of the Nova Scotia Major Midget Hockey League, the Picto County Weeks Junior A Crushers of the Maritime Hockey League, and the Picto County Scotians of the Nova Scotia Junior B Hockey League. So uh, a very busy uh picto or petter picto sports that we've got here oh, i see what the problem is we've got some uh a little bit too much water in some areas and so they're just taking some time to clean up that a little bit uh, from the zamboni something i'd also like to mention and i forgot because i almost pulled the microphone out of the thing um hockey nova scotia is hosting a big event in Truro. it is world girls hockey weekend that's coming on october 6th the event runs from 9 to 3 at the Racines Lincoln Center. If you've got some uh, girls who are playing uh, not necessarily this level, a couple years younger who really want to get involved with, uh, with hockey, experience the thing, they'll have development camps and everything happening there. The action begins at 9 o'clock. Novice Adam Peewee in Bantam. You can sign up at HockeyNovaScotia.ca. Of course, Hockey Nova Scotia really pushing to develop women and female hockey in the province and they're doing a great job with the midget triple a's and of course all the leagues that are advancing better world girls hockey week october 6th in truro and we continue to see this as one of many initiatives not only by hockey nova scotia but we see on the poster hockey canada and the double ihf yep. both involved in this so it really is that movement to bring the female game to the next level. I mean, we know what Canada can do uh, with its girls hockey programs and its female hockey programs uh, all around the world. We've seen that the Americans are right up there as well. And the rest of the world starting to catch up. It's not just an automatic Canada, the US and everybody else anymore. The Sweden, Finland, Russia are starting to improve in their female games as well. And it's only better for the game that these other countries actually do catch up and, and get more competitive games with Canadian female and American female teams as uh, time goes on. Yeah, you're right, Petter. And I mean, when you, when you look at the IIHF, they've got a, or the double IHF, whatever you'd like to call it, they have a lot of great female uh, uh, programs there. And when it comes to Canada and the U.S., for the longest time, like you said, they've really been dominating. You know, the gold medal game is probably going to be Canada and the U.S. year after year after year. But the last year, we saw a lot of improvement in Finland as well. The girls are getting more ice time. They're getting faster. Um, and they're starting to take the development a lot more seriously in countries like that, which is only a positive. And like you said, I mean, the more women's hockey gets more competitive, and, and the more the fans are going to come out, and the more these, uh, these girls are going to get out of it. And hockey's a great sport for any age and any gender, and it's, it's great to see it affecting the WIHF. And of course, uh, you know, the Olympic female hockey uh, uh, events, a big part of that as well. We saw how the female game developed in Korea as they got prepared for hosting uh, in Pyeongchang yep. earlier this year. We're seeing it in China with actually franchises in 
the Canadian Women's Hockey League, and we're going to get the teams actually off the uh, or uh, onto their benches now, uh, as we've got that issue with the ice uh, down in what will be the selects defensive zone for this second period. Uh, and so we're going to get uh, the Zamboni back out onto the ice here for a moment. We're seeing it in China and have to give a big shout out. When we're talking about female hockey and we're talking about Picto County, we got to, of course, talk about Blair Turnbull, who was part of the uh, Calgary Inferno team that came oh so close to winning the CWHL championship uh, this past spring. And uh, another... Uh, Great big uh, name in female hockey who uh, announced a retirement uh, not too that not too long ago. Yeah, I mean, uh, for what Turnbull did, I mean, you, you, I don't know if you came to the, the, of course you did, the big celebration when they saw Canada in the U.S. The game wasn't on until, I think, 11.30 at night, but they packed the Wellness Center here to watch Blair, of course, a hometown. And, uh, I mean, Victor County loves that stuff. When it comes to one of my favorite uh, women hockey players, and of course, I love watching the Canadiens play every time I go to Montreal. It's the same pace of hockey of what the Montreal Canadiens have been given, but for a lower price. The fans come out, they love it. But Carolyn Ouellette, she announced her retirement, uh, I think it was four days, three days ago, from, uh, uh, well, from international hockey. She represented Team Canada at the World Championships. She's got gold uh, in the Olympic Games on more than 15 occasions four Olympic gold medals, six world championships, and a couple of big league trophies with Lake Canadien as well. Carolyn Olet, just uh, a big role model for, for young women everywhere. And you know that Olet, even though she's retired from playing, you know she's going to have a role within Hockey Canada yep. to help develop the game, whether it's at the coaching level or, or whether it's as a scout or however it, it will be. She will continue to be involved in the game. I think we might be ready to go now. As uh, minor delays due to uh, issues with the ice, but it looks like we've got those solved. So the Reds' power play will go back to work here. There's 39 seconds left in the power play for the Reds, their second power play of the game, as the second period is now underway. And the puck is into the select zone, but not very deep. And sent back down the length of the ice. Of course, no icing because the selects are on the penalty kill. Puck is brought back behind the net once again, changing directions, now stopping. And slowly working the puck up the wall and out to center. But waiting for it there is the selects defenseman. I believe that's McLean continuing to back up with the puck as she was waiting and waiting for somebody to force her. Finally, she sends the puck down the ice and that will pretty much do it for the penalty to Jenna Reed. She steps back out onto the box, out of the box, and we are back to five on five. With the puck there is Emery. Emery coming through center. Or sorry, that's 13, not 12. McLean coming through center. Now she'll dump the puck in and back to get it behind her own net there is Julia Green. Green plays it around the boards. The Reds are able to clear, and it goes all the way down the length of the ice, hustling hard to try and get to it, Regan Berry, but she couldn't get there before the puck crossed the goal line, and so that's an icing call against the Reds. Yeah, the Reds do have red helmets, or at least some of them do, and one of the <laughs> fastest skaters on the ice that I noticed absolutely flying around was uh, uh, Mia Paul, just giving it on that penalty kill. Also a shout out as well to Penelope Ringette, who's had a good game so far despite taking an early penalty. And Mia Paul, and we did find out that Paul and, Mia Paul and the now goaltender for the Reds, Kai Lynn Paul, are sisters as well. So two sets of sisters on that team. Coming out from behind the net, thrown through the crease, but Harrison couldn't get her stick on that one to get a shot away. Now they battle in the corner, coming in and picking up the loose puck. I believe that's McKay now back to the line. Clark with the shot. That gets blocked by uh, 20, or 34 Spencer. And the puck is along the far wall. Nice block there by Spencer on that last little play. Now thrown towards the front of the net. Puck ends up coming to Spencer, and she's able to get it out and down the ice. And good, uh, good call on the weight there of the shot by Spencer as well. Draw to the forefoot. 
Stops just shy of the goal line, so no icing. But the puck is now back in the red zone. Now they come back out to center, battling there and into the select zone. With it now, there's Arsenault with a shot, and that gets cleared away by McNeil. Arsenault going back behind the net, but she can't get there ahead of uh, Harrison. And now it's sent down the length of the ice, and going back to get it is Julia Green. Green. Or sorry, that's Deschen, rather. 25, or 35, not 25. And now here comes that speed that you were talking about. Paul trying to work her way through. Puck is at the side of the net. They try to jam away at it. It goes behind the net. And now the selects get possession and are able to work their way out. Coming out with it there is Lindsay Smith. She gets the pass over to Linehan. Linehan goes across, and what a job on the back check there. I believe that was Desjardins on the back check, breaking up that beautiful cross crease pass. Puck now with McLean. McLean plays it down into the corner, back to McLean. McLean skates it all the way back to the line. She goes across. Clark with the one timer. There's a deflection and a big save made there by Kylin Paul to keep it a four nothing game. Clark can't hold the line. She'll have to back up with it. Plays it across to McLean. McLean gets it ahead. And here comes Linehan with it now, back into the zone. Linehan takes the shot. Paul makes the save. Linehan gets it back, tries to wrap around, and puts it through the crease. And it ends up going harmlessly down into the corner on the far side. Linehan again behind the net. Looking for someone to pass to, throws it towards the front of the net. Nobody there in a white jersey. And the puck is played out to center ice. Backing up with it now, Jenna Reed. She plays it off the wall, and the selects come back in again. Heading towards the net, but the puck steered aside by Paul. Now back to the line for Reed, or for um, Clark rather. Her shot gets steered away. And an attempt to spring Paul, but it gets broken up and the selects come right back in again. 4.20 gone here in the first period. And what a goal! Sometimes all you can do is tip your hat to the sniper. And what a snipe that was. I believe that was Eva Warnell. We'll wait for the official word. I'm pretty sure that's an 18 there. Of course, so much of the jersey blocked by the back of the pants. Could be an 18, could be a 10. Regardless, it's a goal. But I'm pretty sure that is Eva Warnell who scored that goal. It's that person just looking to tell what that number actually is. In the meanwhile, here comes Jenna Reed with a shot, and there's a save made. It was indeed Warnell. Warnell, one of those returning players that we talked about during the pregame, who has that uh, SO Cup experience from this past spring. A lot of players, or uh, at least a good seven or eight players from this selects roster were part of that team last year, and now coming flying in, there's a chance. And what a glorious opportunity there. But the puck comes all the way around the boards. Now a three on one going the other way. Pass in deep and Paul makes another big save. A beautiful save there by Kylin Paul on the three on one to keep it five nothing. Shots on goal right now, 32 to six. And yeah. uh, uh, Reed getting the assist on that Warren L goal. That is her second point of the night. When it comes to Warnell, if you're talking about the preseason as well, in the last four games, she has seven points. She is going to, and now we're going to see another penalty to the selects. And that's going to go to Ashley Livingston. Didn't see what the uh, call was coming at five minutes, 20 seconds of this third period, or second period. And so the Reds go to the power play for the third time here this afternoon. Puck is sent out to center ice. And it was slashing was the call at 5.20. Puck is played back into the red zone. Now the pass ahead, that's intercepted by Harrison, but in still offside was fit. So that'll be a face off just outside the selects, or just outside the Reds blue line. 1.36 left to go in the penalty to Ashley Livingston. Paul needs to get as much ice time as she can out there because she is flying 
especially on the penalty kill. When the selects are backing up in their own zone, killing time, Paul's the only one who's chasing them down, as we saw right off the faceoff. And there she is again, going after the puck. Mia Paul, number 32 there in the black and purple, jamming away at the puck. Puck comes to the line, and there we see again the shot. They're jamming away at it still, and covering up and making the save is McNeil. But again, we see that shot of Julia Green is what started it all. Now we're going to have another penalty as a cross check is called. And. going to go against the. That puck was in the net, but the reason why it wasn't a goal is because of a cross checking penalty. And I believe it's going to be. Everybody, no, it's oh, going to go against the selects. So he pulled the puck from the back of the net, which is why I thought it was in the net. But I guess we're having a five on three. So a minute and 15 seconds of five on three after Alyssa Fitt takes a cross checking penalty at 6.05. So a glorious opportunity for the Reds to get on the scoreboard. And. The selects get the face off and send it down the ice. And now the selects, even though they're down five on three, not playing any sort of soft four check. They had a player right on the puck carrier there. Now the pass comes out to center. Dumped in right onto Kristen McNeil. Actually, no, it just misses the net. And so that will be an icing against the Reds. And further to your point, about Mia Paul, not only is she the fastest player out there, but she might very well be the smallest player out there as well. But she's flying around like her lack of size doesn't matter one little bit. And did you see that slap shot? She had a partial break and she teed it, missed the net, but it made a pretty hard sound bouncing off the boards. She can shoot the puck. You know, we sometimes talk about players at this age, if you could just gain, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds, for Mia Paul, if she could just gain five, six, seven inches, she's got all the skill set. That much is obvious. And if she gets a little bit more size as well, she is going to be an elite, elite player. Meanwhile, the power play is still working. And actually, that I think there's two 32s. There's two 32s. So that, that is confusing. Okay, there's 32 with the white helmet, and now right back out onto the ice is. So how do we know if that's Paul then? Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully we've been heaping this praise on the correct person. <laughs> I'd, I'd hate to. Th oh my god. Okay, so. No, that's a 22. 23. 23. Okay, so that's Penelope Ringette. Sorry, okay. So all of the... <laughs> Paul is still a great player. Paul is still Ringette a great player, but Ringette is the one who's the really small one, the really fast one with the red helmet. And that now we're going to have another penalty against the Selects. And it's going to be a head contact penalty. And that's going to go against Warnell. So the Selects have now been on the penalty kill for much of this period with 8.02 gone. They're back on the penalty. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Nat just Sorry helped fill that, us in. Matt. Yeah, we, <laughs> again, it comes with the numbers being tucked into the back. Sometimes you can't tell what number is what. So, it looks and, like an 88 right now. Like when yeah. you're tucked in numbers. Yeah. So we thought we were looking at 32, which was Paul. But it was actually a 23. So it's going to be another three second. <laughs> Mia Paul is tall in the white helmet. She's also very fast. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, we apologize profusely for that. Oh my gosh. Uh. And, and this is why we believe in mandating that jerseys must not be allowed to be tucked in. Now we're going to have another penalty coming up. It's going to be a cross-checking call, and this time it's going to go against the Reds. 
And it's number... <laughs> That's a 35, is it? Deshen? No, that's a 27. Caitlin Bird. Okay. It, <laughs> like, that's how hard it is to tell what number is what. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and, of course, none of them have nameplates either. So, oh, uh, yeah. It's our first game of the season with this particular team in this particular league. So, that's our excuse, and we're sticking to it. And now we get some pushing and shoving after the whistle as tempers start to flare a little bit here. We've got a minute and 34, and now it looks like Ringette is gonna go off for a penalty. Yeah, it was almost like the select player was laying on the goaltender and Ringette didn't like that at all. And Ringette just moved the select player, but in a very aggressive way, which is going to lead to a penalty. So the selects will now have a power play, four on three for a minute 34. Then they will have 12 seconds of five on three. And then after that, they'll have 14 seconds left of five on four. Three penalties in less than 25 seconds of play. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the clock was actually running before the puck was dropped as well. There's a shot safe made. Oh, it's the first game of the season for everybody out there. First regular season game, anyway. So the Selects have a four on three right now for another minute and 16 seconds. Puck is sent down the ice. Going back to get it there, that is Ella McLean, and we can tell that that's a 13. So we're good there. Here comes McLean up through center. McLean into the zone, still with the puck. McLean skates through one check. McLean skates through a second check. McLean now will cycle the puck back down into the corner. And I believe it's now back to McLean again. McLean to the line, plays it over to Clark. Clark, her shot gets through, save made by Paul. Into the corner, puck picked up there by McPherson. Back to Clark, over to McLean. There's a shot, another save by Paul. She'll hang on for a faceoff. 33 seconds left in the four on three. With 10.31, left to go here in the second period. Paul's been playing a good game too and in the last eight shots she stopped seven of them and again when you stop selects pucks it's not weak shots from the outside these are in close chances and Paul doing a good job after taking over from Barry 100%. And not only are they tough shots they are tough shots with a lot of traffic in front as well. <laughs> Can't help me on that one yeah. Yeah, when, when 35 looks like 27, there's not much I can do about that. All right, puck is down into the corner. Now played to someone whose number I literally can't see any of because the entire number is in the back of the pants. And the numbers on the arms are kind of folded too. That's a four? Okay, so when the entire number is missing, it's Taylor Long. <laughs> Okay, so we make a note of that. The entire number's missing, that's Taylor Long. Puck is sent down the ice, that's gonna be an icing call. We're back down to five on four now as some of these penalties are starting to expire. And normally, we are a little bit more coherent with, <laughs> with our play-by-play. -play. Thankfully, we have a good cameraman so the pictures can tell you most of the story right now. Oh my gosh. You see a 28 on the camera and we say it's a 37. Uh, go with the camera. Yeah. Well, 28 I can see clearly right now. But, of course, I don't have a 28 on my list. Lauren Waters. Oh, I missed her. Oh, there she is. Yeah, Lauren Waters. Okay, so 28. Oh, boy. Penalties are over. Oh, we're back to five on five. There's a shot. Nice deflection. But Paul able to stay with it. Kylan Paul making another beautiful save. As that puck again goes down the ice, that'll be another icing call against the selects or against the reds rather so yeah. good penalty kill by both teams i mean we had a little slurry there of some four on three some four on four some five on four and both teams very good on the penalty kill now the puck comes back to the point played down into the corner there by smith 
comes off the boards for uh, De Shen. Now back to the line, looking to get a shot through. There's a shot, nice deflection. And the rebound cleared out of danger, trying to spring Christensen, but doesn't quite work. And back to get the puck on the back check was the defenseman that is Smith. Smith plays it across to McLean. McLean gets the pass ahead. Brought into the zone there by Livingston. Now Livingston gets it back again, plays it back to the line for McLean. Her shot steered aside by Paul. Nearly too many men on the or too many players on the ice, as the selects almost get caught on that change with Lenahan stepping on. Pass ahead and tied up at the blue line. There was Pitts. 8:11 left to go here in this second period. Coming in with the puck there is McLean. Trying to center it, nobody there. Ringette will get to it and she'll play it over to her line mate and out to center. Now coming in hard on the four check with Spencer. But the selects, that pass just a little bit too far in front of McPherson, or Warnell rather. And so that's gonna be an icing call against the selects with 7.50 now on the clock. Yeah, that pass was centimeters better. I thought it would hit the tip of the stick, but no dice. Big face-off here in the uh, select zone. Something that hasn't been too favorable for the Reds so far this game. The Reds win the draw. Gregan gets the shot away, but it gets deflected well wide. Shots on goal right now, 37-8 in favor of the selects. Coming out, there's the pass across for Pitts. Pitts. Nice little stick handle move. Tries to make a pass through. Too many bodies in the way. And now coming out with it, there's Arsenault. Arsenault gets the puck in deep into the select zone. Wrapped around to the near side. Reed has a little bit of trouble receiving that pass. Now Ringette, she gets it knocked off her stick by Reed. Ringette able to chase the puck back down again. Plays it back to the point. There's a shot from the point by Arsenault. And now sent down into the corner. Battling below the goal line. And coming out with it now. The selects player falling down on the stick of one of the Reds players. No call against either of them. And play allowed to go on. There's a shot from behind the net that was sent through the crease looking for a stick. Couldn't get one. Now a deflection right in on Paul. And again... Coming in and crashing the net, Linehan and the Reds defending their goaltender, Kylie Paul, or Kai Lynn Paul, excuse me. And I got no problem with the Reds defending their goalie like that. No, especially if Linehan's going to go inside the blue paint. The second you step in there, especially in, a, in, in the midget ranks, you kind of, you don't want to be in there because you're showing the Reds that regardless of the fact you're up by five, you're still pushing and you're going to push for the rest of the game. And for the Reds, you kind of look at it, especially when Barry leaving the game, as listen, one of our goaltenders is already hurt. Just back away, give her space. She already made the save. And here coming out of the corner now, Warnell tries to go short side. That is saved by Paul. The rebound ends up going wide. Now the puck up the wall. McLean can't get it back in deep. And out come the Reds. Puck is dumped down and going back to pick up there was Clark. Clark gets it back again behind below her goal line. Played ahead. That gets intercepted. And there is a chance, and I believe that was Paul. I can see the three. Yes, that is indeed Paul. Now Paul getting tied up with Clark. And Clark and now Clark takes a shot in the back from another player. And we're going to have another penalty against the Reds after that play by Julianne Desjardins. As the physicality picking up here by both teams. And there is going to be the penalty to Desjardins for that shot in the back of Clark. Yeah, they had a discussion better and Desjardins had two hands on the stick. It wasn't a hard shot, but the motion for cross-checking was made. You got to call that 100% of the time. 
So the selects go back to the power play with 5.31 left to go here in the second period. And a 5-0 current scoreline in favor of the Subway Northern Selects. There's a shot deflection and it ends up going just wide. Puck comes back to the point near side for McLean. She plays it down for McKay. Now trying to get to the puck is Livingston. But getting there just ahead of her was Gregan. Now back with it once again. McLean, there's a shot. Another nice save there by Kylin Paul. As Paul has now made 12 saves on 13 shots since she came in. And when I was down talking to the coaching staff of Fredericton, or of the ED, uh, Edza Reds, between the first and second period, and I was complimenting the play of Ailey Berry, he said, that's one of the best parts of our team, absolutely, is our goaltending. And we're seeing it here from both of the goaltenders for the Reds so far this afternoon. Puck is played back into the corner as the select still on the power play for another 90 seconds, back to the line. There's a shot off the stick of McLean. It goes behind the net, thrown towards the front, but that just misses. And Regan Berry will send it down the length of the ice. That'll kill off a little bit of time on this penalty kill. 1.14 left to go in the man advantage for the selects. There is Smith. She goes cross ice, dropped off into the zone, teeing it up, shot deflection, and looking for the rebound were the selects, but no rebound to be had as Kylin Paul again makes the save. And not only is she making the saves, but very few second chance opportunities as well. Yeah, you're right, Petter. She's gobbling the pucks up, that's for sure. And when you've got somebody taking them, like Cassie Clark, she can rip that puck on that. She's taking a few, and again, that one she took a couple seconds ago, just swallowed up whole, no rebound. And back to get the puck in her own zone now is Jenna Reed. Here comes Reed. Reed carrying through. Reed coming towards the net, puts it off the side of the post. Great opportunity for Reed. Now puck comes back to the line, Linehan. Linehan. Her pass just misses the target. Now it's picked up, thrown towards the front of the net. That goes through a few sticks. And able to get the puck cleared out into center ice was Regan Berry. Reed once again. Berry right on top of her, so Reed will play it across. Now they get it ahead, and coming into the zone was Emery. Emery finds Pitts. There's a shot by Pitts. Save made, rebound comes loose. Now it comes to Clark. There's a shot into the traffic. Puck comes back to Clark again. She'll put it on again. There's another chance, whacking away at it. And again, we'll have a crowd. And things starting to get a little bit nasty here. penalties on this play. And Ringette, I believe that's Ringette, is gonna go to the box again. She had a penalty earlier for the same thing, pushing people in the crease. We're also going to get a penalty for the selects. These should even each other out, but we'll wait to see what the calls are officially, regardless, a player from each team in the box right now. And I believe that was Warnell who went in for the selects. Looks like it's just going to be coincidentals. But we're getting to that. Actually, no, the extra penalty is going to go against Mar Mariah Linehan. No, they're putting the penalties. Okay, Linehan gets two, and Ringette gets four. So we're going to play four on four for two minutes, and then the selects will get a power play with 3.28 left to go here in the second period. Normally, I thought when one player gets four and the other player gets two, the power play happens immediately and the other two are sort of treated as coincidentals. That's how it works in most other leagues, but... That's what I thought it was too, Petter, and I think the extra two might be uh, Ringette gave Linehan a shot on the way to the bench, another slash there, so... Uh, it does look like we're going to do four on four and then... And that could very well be the way the rules work for the Nova Scotia Female Midget Hockey League. Yeah. 
Although one, one of the players who was out on the ice was just out there to talk to the ref. She's on her way back to the bench now. And that was Mia Paul. So. So Linehan gets two for roughing. And Ringette gets two for cross-checking and two for unsportsmanlike. So So Eight penalties so far this period. And the uh, flow of the game, well not only, first we had the, uh, the, the issue with the ice itself so that delayed the start of this period. And now we've had so many penalties called in this period that it has really taken the flow out of this game, what little flow we sort of had because of that delay that we had. And the, uh, now they're gonna do it right. Now it looks like they're gonna do it right. Someone's gonna go over to serve the extra two and we're gonna have the power play happen right away. And if that's the case, I mean, that's Hockey 101. Those four officials out there on the ice should know that. And the off ice officials, if they have any question about that, yeah, everyone should have known it. The people in the box should have known it. The people doing the scorekeeping should have known it. And of course, the the, the, the referees there should have known it as well. But that's exactly, their, uh, they still didn't put it up there right unless they're dividing the penalties now. What you should have up there is exactly what you said, Petter. Just a single yeah. two minute penalty should be on the board. Right now what they do is they've got 28 for two, 23 for two, and Linehan, the, the lone one still sitting at 14. Linehan shouldn't even be up there. He should just have the 23 for two. Yeah, and that one is the one being served by Waters. And, and this is, I mean, I, I, the people who are in the penalty box doing this work, they're volunteers and they are, you know, I, I give full credit to any volunteer who wants to come out and help out in any way, shape, 100%. or form. However, I firmly believe that if you were going to volunteer to be an off-ice official, like the scorekeeper, timekeeper, anything of those uh, types, there should be a workshop that is given at the beginning of every year for anybody who wants to be an off-ice official to go over situations like this. What happens if multiple penalties happen at the same time because even if you're doing this at the atom level and you don't expect to see a big rough game because they're only eight nine ten years old the fact of the matter is if you're going to be an off ice official hockey nova scotia or hockey new brunswick should be willing to give you a workshop at the beginning of the season and if if you're not committing to do every game, I totally get that. And if you're only going to end up doing one game, but there should be one of the two or three people in the box every game who has gone through the workshop, who knows how to deal with those sorts of situations so we don't have these kinds of delays because all it ends up doing is hurting the players who are standing around waiting for things to get figured out. So the selects are back on the power play and it is underway and there's a couple of beautiful saves by Kylan Paul as she continues to impress coming in in relief of Ailey Berry who also impressed before she had to leave the game after that collision late in the first period. Selects power play continues to work. Here's Pitts with the puck. Blocker save. Puck is brought down and it's called a hand pass. Although it looked to me like like the puck was brought down by Emery to her own stick, but the referee calls it a hand pass, and I'll give her credit. She had a better angle on that play than I did. 
Yeah, eight minutes was killed there waiting for that penalty call and you're right Petter, early on in the game I was mentioning how I used to complain when I was on the ice they had to drop the puck immediately before the break because my feet hurt. When you're sitting on the ice for eight minutes and again your heart rate drops, everything gets a lot slower and the game slows down and that's especially detrimental to the team that's on the power play who's looking to capitalize off that penalty. And again, I have nothing against the individuals who are down there in the box right now who are volunteering. I think it's wonderful that they're volunteering to spend their Saturday afternoon helping to uh, support the game of hockey. I just believe that Hockey Nova Scotia, Hockey New Brunswick, all of the, the branches should be giving these people workshops so that they are prepared for these types of situations. Now we're gonna have another penalty as it's gonna be head contact penalty and I believe that's gonna go against Waters. And it's gonna be a head contact penalty. So the selects will go to a four on, or five on three for 44 seconds and now, or no, that's uh, 26 Desjardins. And Desjardins very frustrated as she goes into the box punching the glass on her way in. Second penalty in five minutes better as she goes to the box for head contact, 44 seconds for five on three, she got four minutes. And so the double minor to Desjardins on that one and her penalty will carry over into the third period unless the selects start putting up some power play goals here. Puck is to the line, nice play by Clark to keep it in. Now Clark gets it down to fit or that's Long rather. Now back to Clark again, back over to Long. Long comes near side, there's a shot and Warnell doesn't get much on that one. Now back to the line again, just holding the line there was Clark. Now comes near side, that's uh, Smith rather. Now she tries to go back across to Clark, that pass doesn't connect and the first of the two penalties will expire. We're back to five on four, and right coming out of the box was Waters, and just as she came out of the box, the Selects player backed right into her, and I believe again that was uh, Clark, and so the Selects end up having to go all the way back into their own zone. 107 left to go in the period, 253 left to go in the double minor to Desjardins. Now battle at center ice there, and winning that battle with Spencer, she's able to get the puck down the length of the ice. Meanwhile, Kylin Paul screaming at her defense as in behind everybody, just hanging around down there, was KJ Emery. Now Emery gets a shot away, and that goes off of the crossbar, but Emery was a good 10 feet behind any of the defenders for the Reds as Paul was screaming at them, trying to get their attention. Now Paul makes the save with 27.1 seconds left in this second period, 2.15 left in the penalties to Alexandre De or uh, excuse me, Julianne Desjardins. That's 18 saves now for Paul coming in and you know, normally you spend that, you span that over out of a span of two periods better. Paul's made those 18 saves in a little over a period and a bit. And the selects keep pounding, but she keeps covering the puck and making great decisions. And another nice save there on another chance here in the dying seconds of the second period as the selects power play continues. Puck comes out and now coming in shorthanded, there's a chance for Mia Paul. She puts that one wide, six seconds left in the period and the selects will come out Shots on goal were 27-5 after the first. They're 47-9 here after two. So the shots in that second period, 20 to four in favor of the Subway Northern Selects, but they only score once in those 20 shots. After two periods of play, it is five nothing for the Selects. We're gonna take a break. We'll come back, get you ready for the start of the third. The only goal in that period, once again, Eva Warnell from Jenna Reed back at 4-13. And we'll take a break. We'll come back, get you ready for the third in just a few minutes. This is Nova Scotia Female Hockey Midget League, or Nova Scotia Female Midget Hockey League action here on Petter Picto Sports through Ustream.tv.
Neither, neither did I, to be honest. Bring up the, I'll show you what it looks like here. from anywhere for free. Seven, big C, two small V's, eight, big C, four, big F. When I was in grade two, this is a true story, when I was in grade 
Abby's got the curly yeah. uh, All right, welcome back. <laughs> We're getting ready for the start of the third period as we continue to get corrected on who's who and what's where and what's and up? yeah, all those sorts of things as we. Uh, uh, meanwhile, what, what's going on here? Uh, where do you, uh, I have no idea what those are. Okay, I'll figure that out. Okay, so um, apparently we've been calling a couple of people by the wrong name for much of the evening because we couldn't tell the difference between a six and an eight. And uh, also both of the players have blonde hair, but one of them has blonde curly hair. Yeah, you stream. Yeah. So, yeah, so I've been, uh, we've been referring to two different players as Cassie Clark, but only one of them is actually Cassie Clark. The other one is Abigail McKenzie. So for Abby McKenzie, I sincerely apologize that I have been crediting a lot of your work to Cassie Clark instead. And Cla Cassie, I'm sorry that I've been double shifting you all night. Uh, so... We've got the teams back out on the ice and we are ready to roll. Also have to give another big shout out uh, to the Barry family, uh, the coach and uh, Ailey Barry came up to uh, chat with us during the intermission just to uh, reinforce that yes, Ailey is doing just fine. And uh, big thank you uh, to dad and to Ailey for coming up and uh, chatting with us and letting us know again that she's gonna be, she is just fine. Glad to hear and glad she to see. Smiles. Yeah, she oh was, yeah. She was pretty happy. And now she's, uh, we can see her just sitting right behind her team's bench there 
as the third period is now underway. Puck dumped down into the select zone as the Reds are on the penalty kill for another minute and 30 seconds here to start this third period. Puck is played ahead. That pass misses the intended target. But then that... Ret- uh, what a play there. But unfortunately for the uh, the selects, Taylor Long just ends up putting that puck just wide. Now it's picked up there by McLean. She plays it over. Dropped pass. Now back to McLean. She can't take it cleanly, and Christensen will play it to the line, not out. Kept in there by Fit. Now the puck comes out. 55 seconds left in the man advantage. And Christensen will go in and forecheck against McLean as Christensen killing some valuable time here on this penalty. Temper still a little bit hot after they even had the uh, intermission to cool off. Now coming out with the puck, there's a chance, deflection. Good shot from Linehan in a deflection, I believe that was Emery. Now back to the line. There's a shot from Reed, and the save made by Paul, and Paul will cover up and hang on for a faceoff. 18 seconds left in the penalty to... Julianne Desjardins, the double minor for the head contact. Again, great goaltending by Paul. I mean, we can't say it enough. When it comes to uh, uh, the forechecking ability by the selects, it's second to none in this league. You got to try to weather the storm as much as possible. And for the goaltenders, you know, stopping uh, uh, 43 shots in the first two periods is a good way to do it. Selects continuing the power play. Music clock has yet to start. Finally, the clock starts. And while the selects were on a power play, so this power play going far longer than it should, and there's a power play goal that probably, let's be perfectly honest, with just eight seconds left in the penalty, more than eight seconds elapsed, that should not have been a power play goal, but it will be. And again, you hate to to, to be too negative with the, vol- with the people who are volunteering down in the booth because A, they're volunteers, and B, they're human beings. They make mistakes. But, you know, when it affects... And if this was a closer game, maybe that would be a bigger deal. But a power play goal for the selects that probably shouldn't have been a power play goal does make it 6 nothing, And Lenahan from Pitts... McPherson, Lenahan gets credited with the goal from Pitts, but Alex telling me for sure that it was number 10, Tory McPherson. We'll see if that maybe gets changed later on. But in the meantime, it is officially considered a Lenahan goal. And we've got two and a half minutes gone here in the third period. With the puck there, that was Deshen. She played it ahead. And now, so that is Clark down in the corner with the puck there. Okay, so that. Now coming back on the back check, Jenna Reed able to deny a scoring opportunity there for Caitlin Bird. Now coming out with the puck is Pitts. Pitts runs into some traffic right in front of her own bench. It was 14, it was Lenahan who got that goal. Now the puck is iced by the selects and coming onto the ice, Abigail McKenzie on the defensive pairing change. And now McKenzie making a point of untucking her shirt. Someone told her. (laughs) Maybe maybe that was a pointed message at us. Look, I'm six. Uh, There. Yeah. Puck is played out to center ice, going back to get it there. The Reds defenseman, that's Lemieux. Now she plays it ahead, and here comes Paul. Paul gets tripped up. No call as the stick of McKenzie got into Paul's feet there, but no call against the Selects defenseman. Now we got another player going down. That was Smith, now not able to hold the puck in at the line. Green. 
She has to play it over to her defense partner. And now I believe that's a shot from Warnell. I think that's an 18, is it not? Yes, that was Warnell who took that shot. And another glove save by Kylin Paul to keep it a 6-0 game here. 16-11 left to go in the third period. I'm off it because earlier we said uh, the person who's wearing a number we can't see is, uh, uh, what is it, Cole? Taylor Long. Long, and it just looks like she's wearing an apostrophe right now. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like an apostrophe. Oh, my goodness. There's a shot that gets steered wide coming in from the point to pick up the puck, McLean, throwing it out front for Long. Long, whose number is far too short. Eh? Eh? Uh, oh, 4.13 gone in the third period. And the shot's on goal right now, 53 to nine in favor of the selects. And the reason for a lot of these jokes, these are intended to be self-deprecating. Uh, entirely self-deprecating uh, as the puck is down in the corner there. And if anybody takes them as anything except self-deprecating, I sincerely apologize. I am meant to be the butt of my own joke and nobody else. There, the centering pass go, ends up going onto the stick of Barry and she's able to clear it out. Now it's picked up there by Waters. She's able to get the puck ahead as the Reds come into the zone. But that gets broken up there by McLean. Now McLean will pick up the puck again at the wall, skated out towards the front of her own net and gets away with one there. And now here comes McLean. McLean into the red zone. McLean stops, shoots. Nice block of the shot there by, I believe that was Waters. And now coming back up the other way, the Reds getting tangled up there is Barry. And now Barry gives a little bit of a slash to Pitts as they skated away from each other. Lucky she didn't connect with that first one, Petter, because that would have been a penalty. Puck is now in behind the net. Select still on it. Down to Pitts. She plays it to the wall. There's Lenahan. Or no, sorry, that's a 10, not a 14. That was McPherson with that shot. And again, another save made by Kylin Paul. You know, it's going to be hard being at the other end of these games. You know, you're being outshot 54-9 to nine and they still don't seem to be slowing down on the other end. And you can tell the frustration from the Reds is just building and building by uh, the slashes and, and the, the, the pushes in front of the net. But it does still show that they're in this game and they still want to succeed. And they're still going to push the play to the selects as much as they can in the next 14 minutes. And of course... It's that age-old question of where's the line between disrespecting your opponent by running up the score or disrespecting your opponent by obviously pulling your foot off the gas. There's a chance for Jenna Reed in close and another save by Paul. The last thing you want to do is disrespect your opponent in either way, but finding that balance of not running up the scoreboard but at the same time not obviously pulling your foot off of the gas it's that hard line to find. And now the Reds, and that's got to be an interference call there against McPherson or McKenzie, but it isn't. As McKenzie had her player rubbed out, there's a shot. As McKenzie had gotten away with one back out at center ice here. Now the stick up into the midsection of McKenzie, that coming from Bird. Down into the corner, Pitts with the puck, plays it back up the wall. Reed tees it up, but doesn't get much on that shot because her stick was tied up with a nice play by Arsenault. And now went to play the puck back to where Reed had been, but Reed was coming off on a change. And so that spot was vacated and coming in and getting a good shot away there was Christensen. Now the puck comes to Desjardins. She gets the shot away and the blocker save made by McNeil. And out come the selects once again. Pass ahead. Here comes McKay. Natalie McKay. There's a shot and a blocker save, but it ends up going, or off of the glove rather, 
of Kylin Paul. The shot taken by Natalie McKay. And the block, the uh, save, it looked like it was initially made by Paul, but then the puck went up high into the air and came down into the net. That makes it 7 nothing. 50 saves for the Reds goaltenders so far this evening. Amazing. With the puck now, here comes Alyssa Fit down the left wing side. Fit into the corner. Fit still on the puck. Now getting some help from Long. Long. Puck comes out in front, but cleared out of danger at least momentarily there by Mia Paul. And that'll be an icing call against the Reds with 11.48 left to go here in the third period as they're announcing McKay's goal. And it appears that was un appears it was unassisted. It's I'm waiting for that. I was wondering if something was going to be said. But... And now the selects win the draw yet again. Puck comes off the end boards. Red's able to pick up possession and will bring the puck out to center. That pass just a little bit too far in front of the intended target, Ringette. And then McNeil. Actually, it was a bit of an optical illusion. She had that pad firmly planted against the post, but because of the shadow, it looked like that was a far closer play than it really was. Yeah, it definitely did better. And uh, Ringette trying to get her to throw the puck out with the quick cast in front of the net, but... No way, that was a great play there, making sure that she had control of the puck rather than trying to play it. She made the smart move. And there was a shot right off of the faceoff. Here's another chance as they jam away at it, but again, McNeil able to cover up, and now we get more pushing and shoving again after the whistle. And we're gonna get more penalties called. Give the Reds credit, they are not quitting. But we're gonna get another head contact penalty. And it's gonna go against the selects as... That is... I think that's... That is number 12, KJ Emery, who's going off. And it's gonna be a cross-checking call so Emery goes off for the cross check. They had initially called head contact, it looked like. But they had initially called head contact, but then when she came over to the penalty box, she changed it to a cross check. And the uh, Reds coaching staff, understandably, questioning the change of the call. Meanwhile, Pitts all by herself, killing a good 15, 20 seconds of penalty there, just controlling the puck in the red zone. As the selects on the penalty kill, but all four players were on the offensive side of center. Certainly not laying back here while they're shorthanded. Now an attempted dump down the ice and fanning on that puck was Pitts. Everybody has that happen to them now and then where the puck just rolls off your stick odd. Into the zone again, the selects with the puck. Killing time, as that was Linehan. Now the selects again force a turnover and will send the puck back down the ice. This time it's Livingston. Back to get it there, Desjardins. She plays it up the wall, that's blocked by Reed. She'll fire a shot in, Paul will make the glove save and then play it off the wall as the selects penalty kill here right now spending time in the red zone. Now that'll be cleared down the length of the ice. That's gonna be an icing call against the Reds. And I think what we're seeing here is just the frustration with the way the first three and a half, or two and a half periods have gone. A hundred percent better. You know, the Reds, they, they're just letting them kill the penalty. There's no, no jumping. And it's a very dejected feeling for sure on the ice. And you can feel it up here as uh, Pitts just killed off a good 40 seconds, Dipsy doodling, and 
They're not chasing the puck anymore. They're letting the selects still cycle it. I shouldn't say all of them. There's a couple of them that are still still fighting, and it's um, it's hard to watch. But meanwhile, the selects still on the penalty kill. The puck comes all the way down into the select zone. Now the Reds get control of the puck, and with it there is Ringette. Ringette, what a move by Ringette to get the shot away. But McNeil able to make the save, and Penelope Ringette, a beautiful move. And then she goes and skates right up to his teammate, and it's again put in perspective the size of Ringette as her head barely comes up to the shoulder of her teammate, Alexandra Deschenes. Yeah, she's fast. That was a nice move too. And what I meant, I didn't mean to say that they were giving up. It's just when you see somebody take control of the puck for 40 seconds and you're on the power play, it's a little dejecting. Ring that nice move in front of the net, and she's got good hands. Definitely a great hockey player for sure. Here come the selects once again as we are back to five on five. That pass gets intercepted by Ringette. Then she loses it, and a shot and another nice save there by Paul. For Paul now, that is her. Uh, I want to just double check the math here. 27th save that Paul has made here this afternoon. Now coming into the zone. There's another shot taken by McLean. That one goes wide. Sorry, 29. 29 saves. 29 saves. There's a 30th, but not the 31st as the rebound goes right to Haley Harrison. And Harrison had a wide open cage to work with. And that makes it 8-0 with 824 left to go. Paul makes another save, but unfortunately kicks the rebound right to Haley Harrison, making it 8-0. Haley Harrison knew what you gotta do. She was wide open at her stick on the ice. The puck bounced to her. Johnny on the spot, easy tap in open net, 8-0. And so the selects extend their lead a little bit further as the score line now reads 8 0. Selects win the face off. Couple of nice little moves there coming into the zone, and that is McKenzie. McKenzie ends up losing the puck, but then fights to get it back, plays it back to her teammate at the line who had been covering the line for her. Now an attempt at a centering pass for Pitts. That doesn't get all the way through. Tori McPherson gets credit for an assist, as does Alyssa Fitt on that last goal. So Harrison from McPherson and Fitt at what time was that goal? 11.46. Now we're at 12.24 with an icing call against the Selects. 61 to 14, the shots on goal currently read in favor of the host team in this game. Ringette taking the draw there against Pitts. Puck comes out to center ice. Pitts now, that's gonna be an offside as in just ahead of the puck was K.J. Emery. The puck had just bounced out and then was brought back in again by Pitts. So we'll have another face off, just a couple more seconds coming off of the clock here, 7.28 left to go now in the thir third period. And now here comes the selects, there's a chance. Puck comes up, goes down into the corner now. Back into possession of the selects. Tried to center it there for Livingston. Jamming away at it. And Paul will cover up and hang on for a faceoff. And Alex, one of the big things we've seen from this eight goal outburst is you're seeing the points getting spread around quite a, yes. quite a bit. So good news for the selects fans. They're seeing scoring from pretty much everybody. Yeah, that's what I was just looking at. Uh, you know, Clark's got two points tonight. Linehan's got two points tonight. McPherson's got two points tonight. And the rest, of course, spread out over a bunch of players. It's uh, a 
games like these, when you've got every single player firing in all cylinders, that really shows you what kind of teamwork they have on the ice. It's not one player getting six points, they're spreading it around. And I like how you picked that up, because that's exactly what I was doing right now, yeah. looking up how many players at how many points and how spread out it was. Because by contrast, the game that I called yesterday in the Nova Scotia Junior Hockey League, the Pictou County Scotians beat Cole Harbor by a score of eight to five and seven points yeah. for <laughs> Logan Vandermeeracker, the def a defenseman with seven points. He And with that being the first game of the regular season, he's on pace for 332. Puck was tied up in the corner there and the, re the, the linesman's gonna talk to them because they had a couple of shots in the middle of the back that I thought was gonna get called. It wasn't a hard shot, but the elbow from 23 in, uh, in, on the Reds made contact with the back of a selects player, and then the selects player circled around and did the exact same thing. No penalties, but still something that they've got to watch. Especially when we're talking about an eight-nothing game and tempers already having uh, shown themselves here in this game. With the puck right now, there's Smith. She plays it ahead, and it's down the ice. Paul will steer it aside there for Deschen. Puck is played to the wall, battling there. Spencer in there, she'll be able to play it back to one of her defensemen, Spencer. Still again on it, now it comes to uh, Livingston. Coming in from the point there was McLean, but the pass not taken cleanly. Thrown towards the front of the net and another big save there by Paul. As that is now a combined 56 saves for the two goaltenders for the Reds so far this afternoon. And there are not enough superlatives. I think we've used them all up already for these two goalies for this Reds team. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. That's that's in some cases three games of of output. That's you know if you think about how there's 60 minutes of a game of hockey, that's a shot a minute. And there's been power plays, penalty kills, neutral zone games. That's incredible. Selects showing that they are going to be an offensive force to be reckoned with throughout much of this season. There's a shot from the point off the stick of green. It goes wide. And now the selects will pick it up and come back out. Here comes Haley Harrison. She has one of the goals tonight. She loses the puck, but coming in right behind her to help out was Livingston. Now the puck back on the stick of Fit. Fit sends it down. Back to Fit again. Fit, or it's Long actually who's out there. Fit Long and Livingston, or Fit Long and Harrison, who are the line combination right now. But the puck is turned over to Ringette. Her pass a little bit behind Bird. And the puck will come all the way to Cassie Clark. Clark goes and plays it off the side of the net. Now is able to get it over to Reed. 4.48 left to go here in the period. There dumping the puck in was Long. She'll go off on a change as the selects try to get the rest of their line changed. They get possession back there. Now that's fit with it. She'll play it over. Centered for Pitts. There's a shot. That doesn't miss by much. Now a wraparound attempt and they score. Nine nothing as I believe that was Alyssa Fit on the wraparound. Pitts made the shot. It missed the net. And then the wraparound finishes it off for Alyssa Fit. So Pitts gets an assist, Fit gets the goal at 15.39. It's now 9-0. And we still have 4.21 left to go here in this third period. I want to once again thank everybody who's been tuned in here all evening or all afternoon while well, we're into the evening now long. We appreciate having you all here with us for this broadcast. Don't forget we will be back tomorrow when these same two teams meet again. I believe it's an 11 o'clock start. So we'll be on starting at around 5-2. There's another beautiful save by Paul. And 
That one's sent out and down the length of the ice. Smith gets the assist on the goal by... I thought for sure that it was Pitts. Now, a player for the selects just got absolutely laid out. Yeah, that was a butt end of the stick made connect, contact with the neck and head area of the selects players on the ice. And I knew something was going to happen too because the selects player boxed out the... Uh, the offending player in the red from the corner, and then when she thought the referee wasn't looking, she gave a nice little shot. Wasn't a slew foot, but it was the same motion, and the select player has been down ever since. And head coach Craig Clark showing his displeasure. Allie Christensen, the one who took the, that penalty. A four minute double minor up on the board right now. While I understand the select's reaction, I'm, you can't help but feel like that reaction by the selects as Christensen made her way across the ice is just gonna add fuel to the fire. Well, Lindsay Smith is going to the dressing room. Again, the head contact, uh, she's gonna go and make sure she's okay. There's no point in staying in the game when they're up by nine and there's three minutes left, but she seemed okay. She was wincing while she was leaving, but she seemed that she was walking fine. So um, not something like you just mentioned you want to see in this type of game. Uh, very unfortunate for sure. And so at this point... Uh, if it was up to me, I would suspend the game, but I don't know how the rules are in this league. Yeah. It, or if nothing else, go, go straight time from here yeah. on in, you know? Meanwhile, now the Reds coach having a word with the officials. They're none too happy with the call. The selects coaching staff none too happy with the situation that it created an injury. And we're now waiting for somebody to go over and serve the penalty. Craig Clark was just telling uh, the selects on the bench, don't retaliate, get the puck in deep, don't worry about scoring, don't worry about anything, just kill the clock. And that's yeah. what he was telling them right there on the bench. Yeah. Which makes sense. Absolutely. So coming over to serve the penalty, it is Julianne Desjardins. So she's going to spend the last 3 minutes and 40 seconds of this game in the penalty box as the it gets changed to a five minute major so even if the selects do score the penalty will not expire until after the game is over and so now the selects just work their power play for this last three and a half minutes there's a shot it gets deflected it goes wide pits Picks it up behind the net, not trying to throw it towards the front. She'll just play it back to the line. McLean over. There's another shot. That misses the net. So a five-minute head contact and a game misconduct. And that could very well mean that Christensen is out for tomorrow afternoon as well because it is a game misconduct in the last... 10 minutes of the game, I believe that's the rule. There's a shot, another nice blocker save. Yet another save, and then trying to cover up the puck was Paul with 2.54 now left to go here in the third period. And it's that fine line. How do you not try to score, but at the same time work your power play. You do exactly what the selects are doing. You don't press the issue, you take the point shots. When you miss the net, take it around the net, give it back to the point, rinse and repeat. That's the best thing to do without causing any more tension 
and rubbing it in any more than what they, or, or not that they've rubbed it in, but that's the way that they don't rub it in anymore. Cycle it to the point, take the shot from the point. If it misses the net, regroup and pick up again. But now here comes Penelope Ringette, and she's just going to put the shot right on goal, and McNeil will cover up and hang on for a faceoff. And if I were to pick stars of the game for each team, for the Reds, I've actually got a few candidates. Both goaltenders and Penelope Ringette are three players who all would be getting serious consideration for them. For the selects, you could pick just about anybody because it has been such a balanced game for all of the selects players. But for the Reds, there are certainly those players who deserve to be pointed out. And now there's another save by Paul as, again, the power play crashing the net. But again, not, yeah, you know, we say that with, you know, the air quotes. They were coming in on the net because they have to, you know, you can't pull up completely. Yeah. You just, you know, aren't quite as heavy on the gas. I don't know if that was Reed or if that was Pitts, but number 17, uh, it was, it was uh, Reed. Reed. Reed crashed them. Well, played the puck into the paint, and then the second the goaltender had a cover, just twirled away, skated away, nothing else there. Yeah. Now Reed with the puck there, goes back behind her own net, comes out, plays the pass ahead, into the zone, that'll be a delayed offside, so the Reds will get it and send it back down the ice again. Under two minutes left to go now here in the third period. Select still on the power play as they will be until the end of regulation. Puck is off the glass out at center ice. Played back to Reed. Jenna Reed gains the red line, plays it across over to Fit. Fit now to the half wall. Fit back to the line. There's a shot by McKenzie, and that gets steered up over the glass and out of play. 121 left to go, and that marks the 60th save for Reds goaltending here this afternoon. It's amazing. It, it really is. And, you know, it's a good workout, too. I mean, my gosh. You think of all the gear they have on and the amount of times they move post to post. It's a great, great, great showing from the, uh, the two goaltenders, Barry and Paul. And now with 1.15 left to go, the selects just able to hold the line there with a nice play by Harrison. Now the Reds will come out, dump it down the length of the ice. McNeil tried to slow the puck up, but it hopped over her stick. And now picking up, here's McLean. McLean coming through center. McLean into the zone, tees up the shot. Nice block, and it's cleared out down the ice. Really nice shot block there by Trinity Lemieux. Back behind the net again. Clark plays it ahead. Now it comes back to Clark. With it is Barry, Regan Barry. She'll send it down behind the net. 30 seconds left to go here in the third period. And Clark gets it back again, far side corner. Pass ahead, goes behind the intended target. Puck comes off the wall. Icing gets waved off. And it comes all the way around the boards. And now here's a chance, final 10 seconds. Here come the Reds. Here's a chance, shot, and a big save made by McNeil with 3.8 left on the clock. Her 16th save of the afternoon and maybe her toughest of those 16. Yeah, and, and you know, we haven't mentioned her name very much, but 16 saves is fantastic. And again, it's even harder when you don't get pressured for the rest of the evening. And so 3.8 seconds left. Right off the draw, there's another nice shot off the stick of Penelope Ringette. And that will do it. A 17 save shutout for Kristen McNeil, but a 60 save effort at the other end by the two Reds goaltenders will be overshadowed by the fact that the Selects scored nine goals to earn the 9-0 victory to open the season 1-0. And these same two teams will be back at it again tomorrow starting at 11 o'clock.
Actually, let's just double check that start time as we scroll down, scroll down. Yes, it is an 11 o'clock start tomorrow. Um, at the end of each weekend? At the end of the weekend, yeah. All right, so that will do it for us here at the Pictou County Wellness Center for today. Until tomorrow at 11 o'clock when these same two teams meet again. On behalf of my awesome cameraman, Ian, on behalf of the best caller commentator I know, Alex Terrio, this is Michael Petter saying, may your skates always be sharp, may your shots always hit the top shelf. The final score once again, Northern Subway selects nine, Edza West Reds zero.